to the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're coming to you live from round six, the final round of Swiss of the Corellia Galactic Championship Qualifier here on Gold Squadron Podcast. We have five of these qualifiers, and we are watching right now in in uh and essentially an elimination match. Both these players are four and one. Five and one guarantees you in. A couple of four and twos could make it with decent MOV, but it is no guarantee. And we got two really interesting matchups here. But before we go that far, I want to remind you that this round and all of our rounds this weekend have been brought to you by Curled Paw Creatives. Use that coupon code Corellia2020 for 20% off. Now, for all of these events, we have been teaming up with different content creators and different people in the X-Wing community uh, to bring you guys co-commentary. Now, here's my question to you guys. What does clarinet and X-Wing have to do with each other? I only know of one intersection, and that's right here. The candid clarinetist is hanging out with me today. How are we doing, Sam? Doing pretty well, man. Thanks for that wonderful intro. Um, great to be here. I'm a member of uh, the Hangar 19 Squadron in Indianapolis, so very happy to be here. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about your channel, and uh, tell us about the intersection of X-Wing and Clarinet, please. Thank you. Sure. So uh, my channel is twitch.tv slash thecandyclarinetist. I stream X-Wing games usually on Wednesday nights and some other nights during the week. Uh, mainly it's myself playing games against other people, and I'd sort of walk through all my dial decisions and decisions uh, that I make during the game. And uh, it just happens to be called the Candid Clarinetist. It's not, it really has nothing to do with clarinet. Um, <laughs> but that intersection is that I'm a professional musician. I play with the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. Um, and I just wanted to give a quick PSA um, for those who are able and capable. I would uh, encourage everyone to, if you can, donate to your local arts organizations. We've been obviously unable to perform since March, and we're looking forward to getting back to the stage. So whether it's an orchestra or a dance company or a theater, um, if you can, I know that they would really appreciate your support. Excellent. We're going to move forward here. I realize I forgot to pay out the bets from last game, and I'm forgetting who won last game. Was it player one or player two? Was it red or blue? So I just, like, instantly deleted. It was red. It was red? Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. <gasps> oh, crap. I picked the wrong button. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, red. red. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Oh, no. There's not an undo button. F's in the chat. F's in the chat F's for the, the chat. wrong points. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, well, there's really no way to fix that. I guess I can give y'all a bunch of points just as a, as a my bad. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I can't be the only person who ever messed that up. I can't be, right? Well, here's a new betting round. <laughs> I think you're good. <laughs> here's the new betting round. Uh, Sam, go ahead and break down these lists for me. Yeah, absolutely. So on the red player side, we have Nick Tobin running a Republic list. We have Goji in the Y wing with dorsal turret, seventh fleet gunner, seismic charges, and delayed fuses, keeping those seismic charges around for an extra turn. Also, an interesting interaction between seventh fleet gunner and the CLT Jedi. You can actually get five dice attacks at range one um, because you add the focus result after you get the extra dice from seventh fleet gunner. So it's a very potent combination. Uh, Anakin Skywalker, Baby Annie, in the Naboo Starfighter with Intimidation, getting those blocks, passive sensors, and advanced proton torpedoes. And then we have both Plo and Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Aether Sprites with CLT. Uh, calibrated laser targeting, lining up those bullseyes, adding the focus results. And then Andrew has a very interesting scum list. We got three large base ships. Um, we have Dengar in the Jump Master with Auto Blasters, Contraband Cybernetics, Punishing one title and R5P8, which allows you to reroll dice. Uh, Asajj uh, with just contraband cybernetics, and then Han Solo in the Falcon with Trick Shot, Kira Crew, Agile Gunner, and Lando's Millennium Falcon. So he gets a bunch of different ways to add more dice to his shots. Another another Agile Gunner showing up here. Yeah, this is actually the uh, 
configuration that I've been using it on, and, and it really does help, uh, especially with the Kira crew. You can kind of, you know, skate around rock, rocks or gas clouds and, and get those obstructed shots with the uh, extra bonus, of course, that you ignore the um, the obstructions. Yep. A uh, quick note to everybody. Sorry about missing the... Uh, I'm blowing up, blowing up that... Oh, oh man, I'm going to miss it. Where's my... My opportunity for the seismic oh, chart. Yes. I'm going to miss it. Here we go. There you go. Got it. Just in time. Perfect. I'm so glad that we have more seismic charges. <laughs> um, so that was actually a really interesting play because um, he's trying to blow up the obstacles so that Han doesn't have anywhere to use his trick shots on. That's very smart. Now, um, I, have to, I have to shout out both of these guys. These are both X-Wing players who I know in person. I have seen their faces. I have hugged both of these beautiful men, and I, I, I have to be as unbiased as possible because I love them now. I love them both. So let, may, may the best player win in this game because they're both really, really good. Um, something that I need to also note is, uh, I was trying to get this out earlier, is everybody, I gave you guys 10,000 points as my apology for accidentally clicking the wrong person. Uh, I even confirmed with Sam. Oh, wait. It was it was the blue player who won? Uh, it was the red player who won? Yeah, and then I clicked the wrong one. So, my bad. Everybody got 10K. I know that doesn't quite balance it out, but anybody who maybe got zeroed out has 10K in their pocket right away. It's better I mean, than it doesn't matter because they're going to bet it all anyways, right? That's, that's true. I'm just uh, popping in here just to make sure I didn't miss something. Did Dengar barrel roll? If so, is there a stress on them? I don't know if he barrel rolled. We were. Or did I misview what happened? Yeah, sorry, D. I don't know. We were uh, running down there. Right. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, we were doing the intro. Uh, we got a couple. He did roll. He did roll. He did roll. Yep, so we need to stress on Dengar. All right, I'll pop in there. Oh, why didn't I do that to begin with? I just want to say hi to everybody on stream. Woo hey, everybody. Yeah, really clever play there with the seismic charge on the the debris cloud, and then of course the immediate reload. So no cost to him basically. Um, and I really like the seventh fleet gunner with dorsal turret on the Y wings. I've been messing around with it in hyperspace, and it's super potent with the uh, Aether sprites, the CLT Jedi. It's it's a really really strong combination, and it's pretty cheap. Dorsal turret's only two points now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That Goji is definitely a value and something really interesting to see on there. I'm I want to I'm curious and I know that Nick can pull this off because I've seen him do some absolutely ridiculous things. Um, if he can actually use the Goji ability in order to increase that, uh, like situationally use the bomb, use the delayed fuse, and have that extra defensive ability in a situation that matters. Like, I, I, I want to see that. So, for those of you who aren't familiar uh, with the card text on Goji, it says, while a friendly ship at range 0-3 to three defends, it may reroll one additional defense die for each friendly, uh, and now it's not, it's bomb only, bomb at range 0-1. to one. So, uh, that, you know, that could be a really interesting situation. Yeah, and, and the Jedi love more green dice, that's for sure. And especially he has a couple of CLT Jedi, so they already have three agility. If he can bump it up to four, that's awesome. Yeah, th this is a really cool combination of ships. You know, we've seen um, our, our own boy Marcel fly something similar to this, where you had two Jedi and Anakin, and to see the Jedi stripped down and be able to fit a Goji in there. I want to see what is the extra shenanigans that he can pull here. And let's talk about 7th Fleet Gunner. So if you're not familiar with that card, that essentially lets a friendly ship, while performing a primary attack, do have another attack dice. You can turn those CLT Jedi into quote-unquote 7B Jedi using that set that uh, that 7th Fleet Gunner. Yeah, and not only that, it adds the... Uh... It adds the eyeball result after you roll the dice, so it doesn't limit you to four dice at range one, which is you can get like five dice attacks at range one. Super, super good. All right, Goji took a a one bank there. Did put a, uh, a delayed fuse on the seismic charge. 
So that'll blow up the following turn. Asajj coming into the, uh, the obstacles. I really like the interesting uh, dynamic of the two CLT Jedi against the, the three large base ships, but two of them actually move after the CLT Jedi. So I really think it's going to be interesting because obviously CLT Jedi are amazing against large base ships, but if they're moving before them, not as good. All right, Anakin, pop passive sensors, waiting to see if Asajj gets into range one. And Nick Tobin doing doing what I would deem classic Nick Tobin: tight maneuvers, very calculated in uh, in setup. He knows exactly where these ships are going to go, and he's got a plan. One of the problems with triple th big uh, large base ships, which it's awesome, right, to see three large base ships out there, is they don't fill they fill a lot of space. So one of the possible downsides with all these seismic charges happening is you are giving those large base ships more space to operate. Yeah, he's trying to limit the effectiveness of Han, but it has some, you know, residual negative effects for him because like you said it just gives them more room han continuing his pass up that top of the board shout out to sharky in the chat long time no see my friend All right, and those large base ships seem to have taken it nice and easy. Anakin might still have a shot from downtown. This is at uh, this is advanced proton torpedo, Anakin, so would not have a torpedo quite yet, but might be able to s set up that and target actually, lock. For sure, and this is actually really interesting because Anakin's moving after Asajj, and because of that pre maneuver barrel roll he can set up uh, uh, an intentional bump on the visage and get that intimidation trigger uh, whenever he wants it basically agreed looking for that target lock no valid targets for han dengar out of range Obi-Wan Kenobi just barely range three. I'm gonna go ahead and change out the color on that turret. It's hard to hard to read. Oh, I gotta get a dice box here. Uh, next on top of it. What a great producer. All right, first attack, just one hit. So he did pump it up there with the seventh fleet gunner, getting the three dice. Mm -hmm. And so I was just safe with the evade and a force. Did force the expenditure of both of those tokens, so might have a better chance of possibly doing damage with Anakin from downtown if he's actually in range. Plo is out. And yes, they will be exchanging some shots. Here comes Asajj. A fully tokened up Anakin Skywalker there. You're probably not getting damage through there. Going at Obi-Wan. Yeah, you go into Obi here. Hope for some... Yeah, hope for some bad green luck here. One hit.
So here, Anakin's taking that lock from the passive sensors onto Asajj. Just two dice, range three. Asajj still has one force left for a mod. Spend the focus. Got it. We're fine. Yeah, and we need to get rid of that fuse token. Yes, I'm sure the players will catch it here in a second. Actually, Nick, go, yeah, ahead, and, go ahead and ping it after they're done That's attacking, good. though. After they're done rolling dice. Two hits. And Oof. we'll get two through there. Oh, no, sorry, one more die. It's probably going to spend the force here and prevent a damage. And does. So... The thing about the 7th Fleet Gunner Wild Wings is you're not really expecting them to do any damage. So most turns you're going to end up uh, just refreshing it. So I I, I think there's going to be rarely a turn where Goji's going to shoot from now on. Unless it's advantageous, right? You're like, hmm. You're going to take the disarm during this. Yeah, it's during the system yeah. phase. And, unless there's a situation where like... Yeah, unless you're in a situation where like you don't have a good seventh fleet shot so then you just won't be disarmed for that turn but yeah in the system phase you got to take a disarm recharge the seventh fleet you can just do it every turn yep and you can also you could actually do the recharging of the seventh fleet gunner and reload that seismic charge every turn so you got you got some opportunities to do damage uh depending on the situation yeah and i love that the doubling up of uh you know negative abilities so like you know, I've seen Seventh Fleet with an R2 astromech because you're just you're going to be disarmed anyways. Might as well just get your value while you, while you're going to be disarmed. Mm -hmm. Hey, folks, uh, Judge here. Um, what was that last attack roll into? Um, not entirely sure. We saw that there should have been one damage, right? Okay, I'll, I'll hop into the room and mention something. Cool. Thank you. Shout out to our awesome judges. So I was over here, like, like going, going through all the uh, ships. I, I wasn't Asajj saying. Did take eight damage. Was Asajj supposed to take more than one damage? Because oh, it was, it was into Asajj. Yeah, Asajj took a shield. Oh, okay, that's yeah, what that's... it was. Why did she roll four dice range? One. I think it's obstructed range three. Obstructed range. Three. Ah, I got it. Okay. It was on Asajj. Cool. Yeah, I think we should be square in damage unless I missed something. No, we're good. I missed uh, when when looking over at the tokens. I didn't read that flipped shield as a shield just because it's uh, like a different, uh, you know, different art, different token. Mm -hmm. And so this turn, I, I kind of expect a fast maneuver from Massage, uh, trying to get in some sort of a blocking position. Uh, Ob one is basically committed to this middle lane here. Yep. So I expect something, some sort of a bank maneuver in from Ob one. Probably just a one bank to try to guarantee a shot. Ooh. That's what I would guess. One bank try to get that CLT. Um, do the sh can the shadow cast just barrel roll? I'm I'm they, really not familiar they with the ship all that much. They cannot. Okay. I could see. I could so see. Probably the... something like a. Go ahead. Three bank. Agreed. Sorry, I, I was thinking maybe like just a three bank from massage. Yeah, I think I think that what that does set up though is Anakin barrel rolling in in uh, probably to the right and then setting up that one bank to get that juicy, juicy advanced proton torpedo. It's a big one. That's a good one. Yeah. So I think the game plan is just lead with Asajj and then hopefully just have Dengar come in and uh, be opportunistic. Um. After Asajj kind of mucks things up, he, he he basically just wants to throw Asajj and block as many things as he can in a single turn. But uh, I think for his troubles, he's gonna get advanced proton torpedoed.
somebody in the chat said Han's flying the right wrong way. Yeah, well, I mean, Han, Han has the opportunity to um, let me go ahead and bring this over here. Has the opportunity to come around this rock and then boost. The Falcon does have boost in order to get into into the fray. Han does have agile gunner. I'm kind of surprised yeah, we didn't see the, the the turn there of the arc. Oh, there's a five straight. I expect a two or a three hard. Yeah, so he, he went the, with the five straight. Um, probably just trying to get away from Anakin. Mm -hmm. That's good, though, because that, that blocks Plo. Pretty, mu pretty much Plo can't do much here. Obi-Wan's going to have a nice shot. Um, I think Han's going to two or three hard, because he can just go over this gas cloud with no consequences oh, because well, of fear. We're getting the Anakin barrel roll. That means that Nick has something up his sleeve. It is important to note that Asajj's arc is to the uh, our visual left, right here. It's pointed in this direction. Is this a win or go home? This is a win and probably go home game. There's a couple of four and twos that will make it. I'm not sure where the MOV exactly sits on these players. I think right now Nick is deciding where he wants to barrel roll. We did see him flip over that force. Three straight. Okay. Takes the evade. Might still passive sensors here. Or could just take a defensive focus depending on where Dengar ends up, uh, where he thinks Dengar will go. I do have the seismic charge sound effect ready to go, Sam. By the way, dude, I'm I'm so proud of you. This is, this is just a plus coverage. Thank you from your host. <laughs> All right, so we did get a bump there from Plo Koon, so no attacks being exchanged. But Obi Wan will probably have a range one shot into Asajj's backside. Asajj available to give dish out that stress with her ability probably won't because it does cost her a force and she only has one but it is an option if andrew chooses so and that was a pretty aggressive target lock from obi-wan because he's gonna at least take a shot from massage dengar might come in for a shot han could get a shot on obi-wan and you, know, you really want those focuses for the defense uh for the defensive ability yep Han ignores that obstacle hit because of Kira crew. Takes a focus with the action. Also note, I believe Han Solo has trick shot. Sure does. So he will have a pumped up shot. And the defender will not get any of those bonuses because that's how Kira works. Those shenanigans. Watch our quick tips on it if you don't know how that works. Look up our Kira crew quick tips. Denigar coming in. Super hot here. Free mm. bank. Mm -hmm. Oh, you ready? Got You're it. Ready. Done. Perfectly timed as well. Oh. I mean, I expect nothing less. I was, tr I was trained in timing. I was born in it. So I think we're changing our targeting from Asajj to Dengar here because it looks to me like he's got both bullseyes lined up and he can get that passive sensor advanced proton torpedo into Dengar. So what's the call here? I want, I'm, I'm curious to know. All right, so it looks like Asajj is deciding to use her ability, use that force to put a stress on to possibly Goji. And I like this because this activates the Lando's Falcon title. Mm. So he gets the stress plus the obstruction plus the, the Goji will not get the obstruction bonus because he has that obstacle lock. So that's going to be five dice from Han into Goji. Well, maybe if it depends on if the debris field is blocking because the debris is not being ignored. So that's True. might get might get one just depends on where it is. And Han, it is doubly obstructed, so uh, we will get plus one agility.
Man, how crazy would it be if you got multiple dice for obstruction from Han? That'd be, <laughs> that'd be a big game. No, right no, 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 <laughs> no. Thank yeah, you. Would... Yeah, thanks to the designers for not doing that. Five dice coming in from Han. Oof. Only getting Pretty two. Pretty rough there. And uh, plated hull changing the crit to a regular hit. Yeah. Irrelevant right now, but good that they're remembering triggers. Safe. Goji's a beast. And here we go, Dengar. So I think because you have punishing one, I actually like shooting Obi Wan here. Mm. Um, because you get the three dice of range two. He doesn't have a focus, and then you're gonna get a Saj going on him as well. Uh, looks like he's opting for the range one. Who? Spends a focus for three hits and a crit. Anakin's going to have to think twice before shooting uh, Dengar. Spends the evade. Takes hit crit. It's going to be both shields on Anakin. If he fires back, remember Dengar's ability does allow him to perform a bonus attack against the ship that attacked him in his front arc. Can only do that once. Will Anakin choose to trigger that? Probably... We'll fire with Obi-Wan into, uh, into Asajj. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. This is really interesting. Seventh Fleet Gunner trigger. We see four dice. Yeah, so I think he's going into Asajj. Uh, it would... Yes, it would be Asajj. Oh, you got the force. You got at least one of them. No, you got two. Yeah, there they are. He's probably thinking about his lock. Mm-hmm. It's the one thing with these CLT guys is, is they just need their force for repositioning, so you can't... Spending them both. Force He's your going yourself big. Too aggressively. He said, I'll be hungry tomorrow. Go big or go home, man. That's right. I mean, because of the crit, too, I think I agree with this decision. Two hits and a crit, and that crit is going to go under the shields. It's one thing I, I see happen a lot with Lancers because of the, the reduced number of shields uh, compared to a lot of other platforms. They take crits so often. And that's a bad one. Crit is structural damage, reducing the agility on Asajj. She don't like that. Bringing her down to a single agility ship. One away from half as well. Oh, so Plo... So I think we missed this trigger. Plo took the disarm from Goji, oh. which is another great thing about the Seventh Fleet Gunner, is that if Plo doesn't have a good shot, he can just grab that disarm token. Nice. And Goji can have a shot. And that was three hits, I believe. Going into, so that went into uh, Obi Wan. Into Obi Wan, yeah. Yeah, so that's where spending that force was was paramount. Yep, that's half points on Obi. Giving up twenty seven, and that's first points scored in this game. So I think here, I think you just have to apt Dengar, right? I, it's going to look at his options. He might... Mm -hmm. It's scary because you are essentially giving up half points if you take that shot. Oh, target lock. He's doing it. He's choosing violence. Yeah, I'm mean, full send here. Right? Just do it. You're here, right? Five. It's round six. Let's just do it. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Anakin, the chosen one. Five dice, advanced proton torpedo. 
Only single modded here, but still have a chance. Oof. All right. Not, Not a good for start. A great start. Yeah. Average is looking at three right now. Oh, only two. Only two. That feels bad. Yeah, that feels really bad right there. All right. You know what? At least you got them both through. At least you got them both through. Hit crit. Two shields on Dengar. Now the question is, can you uh, avoid some damage back? He he does have this, the passive mod with the R5 P8 Astromech. Only one. Imagine he's gonna spend one here. He does. He can taste it in the water. An opportunity blank to blank. Tobin gets out clean. Gets out. I guarantee you, he was sweating. I guarantee you. <laughs> oh, man. For sure. And that was nice to see the dice variants go in both directions there. So For sure. One person didn't take the front of it. And Goji now trying to get that half point on Asajj. Two hits. Yeah, and that structural is going to hurt. Yeah, structural is not good here. Takes one. That's half. 36-27. It's still anybody's game. This is a close one. Now, as we're hanging out with you guys in this final round of Swiss of the Corellia Galactic Championship, I want to remind you guys that this round and all of our rounds have been brought to you by Curl Paw Creatives. Giveaways brought to you by District Foundry. We also have Galactic Championship merch as well as GSP merch available right now. You can also use that Corellia 2020 on the GSP site. $5 off of all apparel. Uh, each item is five dollars off but i want to ask you guys a question in the chat we asked earlier everybody what was your favorite faction now the question is what is your least favorite faction to play against new question again you what is your least favorite faction to play against here is the form let us know right there you just type in the chat the faction that corresponds to the uh, the number that corresponds to the faction that's right next to it. What is your answer to this, Dia? I'm curious. Um, I would say if I'm if for me it's like the faction I struggle against the most. It's probably resistance. I really struggle playing against the five A wings, yeah. Yeah, I I have a love hate relationship with the separatists. I just I feel like every time I play them I can't roll paint and every time I play against them they can't not roll paint. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just they're, yeah, they're I go back and forth with them, but I, I'd say to play against for sure they're they're the most difficult. I find them the most difficult to play against. Cool. So this this turns interesting because I, I think that Scum is actually in a good position here because he's in Dengar's in a position to sort of muck up what the Jedi can do. Um, I think likely uh, Nick's going to try to block whatever Dengar's plan is uh, if he can. And I like how, I mean, Asajj is in a bad spot, but I like how she can just turn away because that arc's pointing the right way. And then Han is in a perfect position to not really not get threatened and uh, get some damage onto something. Yep, absolutely. So it'll be interesting to see what Nick does with, yeah, with the, with the Jedi. Um, that's really the, the, going to be the key to this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. Looks like Separatists win the least popular vote. <laughs> People do not like playing against the Separatists. And, and honestly, it's probably because of the Roger Rogers. That's, it's the Vultures. They do have a lot of versatility. They can, they can make, you, uh, make you remember for a long time. Have some of that clone PTSD. Dreaming about those clankers all the time. Oh. I will say I'm, I'm excited that the Separatists are getting more options. Like, I'm super excited about the Django Fett Slave 1. Mm -hmm. 
And um, like the first match of the day, I loved that list, the Grievous and the Four Nan Texas. I thought that was a really cool list. Agreed. So it's nice to see that they're doing something other than just, you know, full vulture spam. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are looking at 354 beautiful people watching today for this sixth round. Thank you for being with us. Has anybody watching been watching all six games? Anybody here six for six? Give us your fraction right now. How many out of six have you watched? Sam, it sounds like if you're talking about round one, you may have been here six for six. I didn't see every minute of every round. I think the middle rounds I, I missed. I went on a hike this morning with my wife, and so I caught the end of the first game and saw that um, saw that game. But, yeah, I'm not sick for six. Sorry, man. I, so, I still love you, and I still support you. <laughs> How dare you do other things? <laughs> I'm six and, for six. Is that, worth, is that worth anything? No, you're being paid to be six for six. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> is that worth anything? No. No. It's worth I, mean, I could fire back and say so are you, but that's not really fair. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh, man. So, Goji has a stress token... Uh, prop, did he clear? Flew too straight. I think. Did he reload? No. Shouldn't be. Uh, he reloaded. That's a red. Oh. There's a red action. So, did we sloop with Dengar here? If we sloop with Dengar, we're going to get some slow collapse in the chat. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a sad, sad Dengar. Yeah, it looks like the, he just forgot to clear this dress because mm. he has a focus token. So we did try to sloop and it must have just barely missed. Which is actually okay for Dengar. I mean, he doesn't like being stressed, but he's not getting shot. All right, there we go. Not stressed, took a focus for the action, and the seventh fleet recharge was the, uh, was the action. Yeah, so Han's just taking a focus here. Uh, he's not taking a CLT shot from Obi Wan, so he's fine with with that. Plo Koon is about to use his ability again. We're gonna see that at the start of engagement. Yeah, Spend sure. his force and choose a friendly ship at range zero to two. You may transfer one green token to it, or transfer one orange token from it to yourself. And be like, hey, I'll take your burdens, my friend. Yeah, and I'm I'm really liking this Asajj just Han combo. Mm -hmm. uh, just really. You know, really nice with the stress. Um, passing the stress, getting the extra dice. Um, and, I, and I think that this disarm passing and Plo, I think it really underscores the power of the Republic. I just think there's there's a ton of synergy. And uh, frankly, I can't wait for the new new ships. I think it's going to be really exciting what, what they can do in the future. Agreed. All right, so Asajj using the ability, trying to lock down that Goji with some stress. That helps to affect some of the maneuverability, taking away the K-turn, if that's what Nick was thinking about doing next turn with Goji. And those Republic Wild Wings hate being stressed, because mm -hmm. they don't have any options. It's like one and two straight, I think, is all that is. That's it. That's all they got. And there's Plo. Yeah, there's the Plo transfer. Goji's going to have a nice, assuming Goji survives this turn, he's going to have a nice seismic charge next turn. This is Han. Big hit going into Goji. Only two hits. No focus results. Takes one. So 
I think this is one of the struggles with, with Scum Han is if he doesn't have Lando in the shuttle docked, mm -hmm. you, you really just, uh, you can't do anything about blanks, basically, because you need to have those your target locks for the rocks. So double modifiers aren't a thing unless you have some other mechanism. I wonder, could you fit Lando as a pilot in here rather than Han and still get all the toys? I know you lose an initiative, but it might uh, might work just as well, maybe even better. Yeah, you, you you just lose the extra dice on the obstruction. That's true. One hit, three focuses. This is Obi Wan so, going into Han, I believe. Yeah, so I think we saw the seventh fleet gunner there. I think, man. Just debating whether to spend the focus. He knows there might be some shots coming in. Are you willing to trade? Because you don't have any focus uh, force to recycle it, and he's doing it. Got nothing. Yeah, Nick just going full send this game. Yeah, just just all in. And we are into the juicy hole on that Han Falcon. And again, we've already had three Seventh Fleet Gunner uses. Mm -hmm. And that's just, I mean, that that is just a, an incredibly powerful upgrade. Making that dorsal turret cheaper, adding it to the Y-Wings is its just so good. Yeah, the Y-Wings definitely got some tools. It's the ship that I think we're going to start seeing more of. Absolutely, especially in hyperspace. I mean, all of this stuff is in hyperspace. At least uh, on the Y-Wing. All right, Asajj out the side, does have two hits. Y-Wing's taking two. Goji is down on shields. And here we go, because Plo took that disarm from Goji, we have a range one shot. Oh, excuse me, sorry about that. They looks like they may have skipped Anakin. No. Yeah, Anakin's taking the passive yeah. sensor lock. Just taking that now. Range one, three dice into Dengar. Whiffs, just one. Oh well, it it lands. Takes a takes one crit, and all those shields are gone. Yeah, so we're into the hole now on all these uh, large base ships, so crits are very, very relevant. I want to go back to like a little decision, which was to target Goji with Asajj instead of Obi-Wan. Mm -hmm. I think without the focus token, you just have to try to get Obi-Wan there. Um, it might not have done anything, but I think taking one or two shields off Goji was not worth the potential to, to take Obi-Wan off the table or put him on one. Yeah, I mean, having a one health Obi-Wan definitely causes the player to play significantly more cagey. You have Han with a bow tie arc available to try to ping in that last bit of damage. So, Dia, I'm just, I'm, I'm so happy that we got, not only do we get seismic charges, but we're getting reloaded seismic charges. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, this is just like, I can't tell you how, how, how pleased I am with all this stuff. It's just a uh, A plus, A plus streaming. Trying so hard. <laughs> And for everybody watching live here, I want to remind you that we stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday here on Gold Squadron Podcast. So join us live Monday. We start at 8.30 for our podcast. Come be part of the discussion in the chat. It's great to see your guys' opinions on the topics that we bring up. Wednesdays, starting at 6.30. By the way, all these times are central. Starting at 6, not 6.30, 6 o'clock p.m. central. We have Gold Squadron League Night where myself or other Gold Squadron members plays against 
people in the community, that's our chance to get some games in. And then on Saturday, we have Gold Squadron Flight Club, where we have community matchups. By the way, if you want to become a part of Flight Club, exclamation point, Flight Club, it's completely free and an awesome way to participate in our weird kind of list building challenges, putting your mind in a different spot, exploring ships, upgrades, and possibilities that you never have before. Tons of fun. That's Saturday's Gold Squadron Flight Club. Now, uh, during the Galactic Championship season, we will still have Flight Club. So next weekend, next Saturday, is Flight Club. Starting at 5 p.m., we have three games that will be happening instead of six. So essentially, you guys get the morning off. Come meet with us in the, <laughs> in the afternoon and evening. Hope to see you guys there. And again, if you want to become a part of Flight Club, exclamation point Flight Club. And that's with an L, not fight club, flight, like a bird or a ship. <laughs> it's almost like you planned it that way. Hmm, interesting. So Dinkar is in a bit of a pickle here because he's stressed. Um, and I mean, I see he has contraband. So we maybe could see a contraband over the cloud, but that would be a... He has to be sure about that maneuver, because then you're double stressed. Yep, you gotta love it. Own it. Country band, country band, country band. Are we gonna see the country band, country band? It's a great upgrade, by the way. I'm, it's I'm awesome. glad that they made it like very affordable, because it's not too good. But it's, uh, you have to make a decision whether to bring it or not. There is the 7th Fleet Gunner Recharge. And we are dropping the bomb. Drop it like it's hot. Seismic charges locked and loaded. So no fuse on this one, it looks like. Which is definitely the right decision. I can pick between any of his two debris. And taking the jump over the cloud... Rolls a crit, so no strain. Yeah, that's interesting too, because now his arc's likely not going to be facing any of the ships, um, which means that Seventh Fleet is not going to be a factor this turn, most likely. Yeah, because you have to. The Seventh Fleet gunner carrier has to have arc on the enemy ship that your friendly is firing at. Yeah, and I really do think these Y-Wings are the the, car the carrier for the Southern Fleet now, at, at least until we see what the gunship has in store, because having that 180-degree arc uh, sideways, I think, is, is much stronger than, like, the arc 170 with the front to back. Mm -hmm. Just having, like, half the board, um, you know, you just do the old Jan Ors, you know, 180 around the board kind of deal. Look at I, I look at all my Jan Ors is Jan Ors I. Super good. That sloop's looking a little better now. Or the 4K. Mm-hmm. Might be able to pop that Y-Wing. So Obi-Wan taking a disengage here. Jan Orzies, yes. <laughs> That's another possibility. Now, Saj will likely be taking another damage because of the seismic charge. But I think... Nick will prefer whichever uh, obstacle can probably get a two for one here. Yeah, definitely. There it is. Boom, 4K, staring down that Y-Wing. Now, uh, the Y-Wing is on top of the cloud, and that shot is most likely obstructed unless that little corner is sticking out. Ooh, that's a strain, by the way. Is that corner sticking out? It is not. It is fully on top of the obstacle, so it will have the bonus for the gas cloud. Ooh. Buy one, get one free there on that uh, debris field between Han and Asajj. So the seismic charge is going to be interesting here because he can either blow up Han's obstructed shot or he can blow up... Okay, yeah, so he's going for mm -hmm. the two so for one. So one on Asajj and one on Han. Still gonna get three dice into Goji because Goji is stressed. Mm-hmm. We could see a dead wilding this turn. 
Right now, Nick That's leading good, right? 36 to 27. Andrew trying to pull ahead. This is his time. Sound effect, sound effect. I just hit it. I hit it a little late. A little late, but they hadn't removed it yet. I was okay. waiting for them to reach for it. Yeah. I'm sorry that I put one more task on your <laughs> on your uh, pla on your plate. This now, this now you have to operate the soundboard in addition to running the tournament, in addition to running the stream. <laughs> so that's, uh, I apologize. So it's just for today. It's 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 a it's a. Corellia day one special and here we go. Han's got to focus this time. That's three There we go, that's a good Han shot And that's gonna be three So Dengar could definitely finish the job here. Did we take a Focus with contraband. What did we take? What was our action with with Dengar? Um, did we not take an action? I think maybe we forgot he may have forgotten to take an action. Yeah, because I think he was just thinking, oh, okay, I can double stress 4K, but you got to remember to take that action. A kingdom for a focus. Oh, he went over the cloud. You skip your perform action step oh, because of yep. that. Yeah. Okay. Yep, I'm done. But you know what? It's fine. He had a mod anyway. He had R5P8 do the work, three hits, and a crit. And he's actually going to take a crit from that R5P8 um, because of how the droid works. Yep. And the Y-Wing so does the cloud, takes hit, crit. Could die if it's a double. And he, stun pilot. So he's going to die next turn anyways if it's a stun pilot. And yeah, Dengar suffers a crit as well. Oh, was it a direct hit? I'm confused. Oh, no, it's dead anyways. It has five hull. And it was a stun pilot for R5P8. Stun pilot says after you execute a maneuver, if you've moved through an obstacle, suffer damage. Oh, no. Well, you got kind of got one like right, damage. right there. <laughs> <laughs> I have almost never seen Stun Pilot actually take an effect. We might we might see it. His history. Get, get your Twitch clips ready. <laughs> First time caller. Sometimes it, it does happen where like they park right in front of it, and then you you flip like a uh, uh, disabled power regulator into Stun Pilot, and they just die because they have to go over it twice. Uh huh. So this was a big turn for Andrew. Andrew able to get ahead here, 36 to 49. That's huge. Yeah, and, and Contraband showing its incredible value that turn. Actually, no, it's going to be a little bit more points. We got to kill Koji completely off of the off of the uh, the overlay here. Some people saying, "What about plated hull on the uh, on the crits there?" So there was mo there was multiple crits that came in. The first one got turned down to a hit, but the plated hull only says uh, one of them. Looks like Nick may have stepped away. You know, he had to run and get his dinner at some point. Uh, but yeah, we'll get that Y wing taken care of here in a minute. So Andrew Goldbach actually has a few more points. Than what's listed there. And yeah, Mr. Rocker Cracker in the chat is also a good point. The where that crit happened actually is even past the opportunity for plated hole to take effect. It's uh you know roll attack die defender modifies, so that's a plated hole trigger would be there, and then the attacker attacker modifies, which is where our five P eight happened. And there you go. Thank you, Nick, for taking Goji off the overlay. So now you see the updated score of 36 to 71. Sorry, guys. I didn't realize they were going to pull him early. No, no, no oh, worries. No sorry. worries. Oh, You're good. Set, yeah. uh, so here, I actually think a, a sloop is good with on here. Um, if 
you sloop left because then you have these two obstacles right in front of you that you can kind of continue your obstruction uh, shots and then Asajj I think you just have to to, to to go fast enough to go after Obi-Wan but but not too fast where he can like hard turn and dodge you um, so I think Asajj's job is to kind of hunt down Obi-Wan as best she can Agreed. and Dengar just has to do whatever he can I mean I don't really have a good plan for Dengar yeah, Dengar could die this turn. I wonder if Anakin can somehow get that advanced proton torpedo off on Dengar and just clear him off the board. That would get Nick another, what is that, 30, 35, 36 points? That's yeah, to close the, he already that, used the torpedo. Oh, he sure uh, did. He sure did. Sorry about that. You're right. Well, you know what? He still might be able to do some good damage yeah. if he can get into range one. Oh, for sure, yeah. Because, I mean, Dengar really doesn't have any options here. He's got to just kind of present arc and and see what happens. So, yeah, Asajj, as predicted, went pretty fast towards Obi-Wan. Um, I like that maneuver a lot. And 5K, excuse me, 4K there for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed earlier uh, that Nick Tobin uh, checked his attack, and he's entitled to that attack with Obi-Wan, and that gave him the information whether or not the uh, the 4 or the 5K was the right choice. 5K would have probably put him just barely off the board. Takes a damage and a strain from st the stun pilot. Yeah, so Dengar definitely in, in a lot of trouble here. Yep, and down the four hole See, there on Dengar. This is where I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised with the two hard. I don't know why we didn't see an arc rotation from Agile Gunner. Because if that was the plan, that would have been the obvious move. Because these ships were definitely going to be in the front arc. So now he has to spend the action to rotate. And he's still only going to get a two day shot. So that was a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Yep. Where is so Asajj? We got a couple of different battles going on. We got Han and Dengar versus Anakin and Plo. And you got Obi Wan taking on Asajj. I will say aesthetically that the three scum ships on the table at the same time looks really cool. It does. One crit coming in from Han. Oh, does he have the evade? He does. Now he's taking a range one from Dengar, which is no joke. And no evade to protect him. And here we go, Dengar going into Anakin. Does he have? He has no Nothing focuses. A kingdom for a focus. I think Nick might take the risk and actually fire at Obi Wan. Excuse me, at uh, at Dengar. Might be thinking about it. Got away with murder there. I would definitely fire with Plo. You fire with Plo. See if uh, if you can bait the Dengar trigger, and then you follow up with uh, with Anakin. Yeah, for sure. Obi-Wan, one hit going at Asajj, waiting for defense there. And so it was interesting that Asajj took an evade. Maybe we would have liked to see a little more aggressive, uh, maybe like a target lock or a focus. Um, I think it was just unlikely Obi was going to line up any sort of damaging shot this turn. Oh, well, the evade does save some damage there, but she yeah. still takes one. Well, I'm officially fired. <laughs> I know what you wanted. I know what you wanted. I understand it. I guess I didn't take into account the structural damage. I forgot about that.
And I'm sorry, uh, Asajj didn't take any damage on that sh that last shot. It was evade force. I read it incorrectly. So yeah, here comes a Dengar shot, I think. Cause he just took two. Well, it depends. Does he want to save it for Anakin and tempt him? Ah, Dengar was strained. We need to re-roll re that. Did they catch that? Is, uh, Nick. Yeah, Nick. Can we stop him? We, we got to re-roll the the. The Dengar attack is. What? What do you want me to tell them? They got to re-roll because of. Dengar was strained. Okay, sure. I'll jump back over it. I, I got it to yeah, them. Yeah. I typed it. Didn't change anything. Same result. Plow, I believe. Um, man, that's a it's pretty unfortunate for the scum player here. Oh wait, no, this was the shot on Obi Wan. Okay, so Obi Wan took a crit there. Blind pilot. Got it. Got it. Sorry, everybody. Lots of information. I think he held on to the Dengar revenge shot, uh, which is probably smart because I think he's more likely to do damage to the on Anakin on the return shot rather than the range two at flow. Three hits there from Anakin to Dengar. And now we get the return shot from Dengar back into Anakin because he saved it uh, rather than shooting back at flow. So hoping to trade here Anakin for Dengar. And the last pain bot charge. Just two from Dengar. And Anakin will spend the force and be safe. So, very good turn there for Nick. He managed to avoid getting Obi Wan killed. He took Denver, Dengar off the table, uh, limited the damage coming into his other two ships. So now, I think, well, I think Han wants to rotate, first of all. I think you want to use, use Agile Gunner and definitely rotate your arc here. Um, Asajj, I think, man, I don't know. I, I'm very unsure about a 5K uh, in terms of how long it goes, but if a 5K fits, that's what you want to be doing here. Oh, yeah. Because Obi-Wan's stressed. Get him. I don't know. What do you think? Doing? Do you think that's going to go off the board? The five for Asajj? No, she's got it all day. Yeah, she's got it all day, and it flips okay. the arc to the right I'd... to the to the side where Obi Wan would be. Yeah, it's definitely what you want to do. I I think Nick's probably going to see this coming, and probably one bank away, um, like one bank to the right, maybe, and maybe like purple of eight. Oh, I guess he only has one force, so probably just take a focus. But then he's going to be stressed, so that's that's a good. Yeah, Asajj is in a good position right now. Um, he didn't agile gunner, which I think is probably a mistake, because um, he's probably going to want to like too hard or I don't know. Han's in a rough spot. Okay, here comes the agile, agile gunner. gunner. Spinny spin. Yeah. 
You fly much uh, scum, do you? Do you fly much uh, like the shadow casters and the large base scum ships? Um, I mean, because of League Night, I have flown so many different things. I can't say that I've flown. I would say the thing that I've flown the most is a Fang Fighter, but uh, I got I got some love for the for the shadow caster. Man, the Fang Fighters are so much fun. I, I I was talking about this with my squad mates earlier this week. I think that that they're some of the most fairly costed chips in the game, and and they also require some of the highest skill like they're they're hard to fly well but they're very rewarding when you do and they never feel overpowered oh oh yeah getting some shout outs from some players who are finishing up games you guys are super welcome love doing this for you and again want to remind all of our viewers we will be live next week for flight club with some weird so you know this is our meta right galactic championship meta and we're gonna do some weird stuff next weekend <laughs> it's gonna be great <laughs> all right Eight minutes left in the game. 70 to 71. Look look at the score. One point difference. You know what? Right now, I'm going to put up a poll. Right now, where's my... We're going to choose your champion. This is not for betting. This is for who do you think right now is actually going to win this game at this point. I will tell you, from the original betting, from the original betting, we had... Let me go ahead and try to pull it up quickly. We had advantage to Andrew Goldbach with 65% of the vote with people who bet. Go ahead, type one or two in the chat. That's all you got to do right now to let us know where do you think this game is actually going to go. 70 to 71. Again, original voting, we had 65% in favor for Andrew Goldbach. What do you guys think is going to happen now? All you got to do is type one or two, and you will see that poll update on the screen. Asajj, one banking. Oh, Dengar's actually dead? Dengar's dead. Mr. Mr. Nick. Yeah, so Nick's actually ahead by a decent junk. Uh, okay, so Nick's ahead 103 to 71. Everything I was saying was a lie. This poll doesn't matter. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. He actually still has a chance. Uh, you sit on a throne of lies. I sit on a throne of lies, yes. I'll, I'll close this poll just because the uh, the information is different. Now that you guys have this, the correct information, I'll put it up again. So that turn, a tricky play from Anakin would have been barrel roll towards the middle of the board, do it too hard, and then boost, because then you block all of Han's hard turn maneuvers, and then you could set up this plow CLT shot, which is what he's trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. And Obi-Wan calls it, gets... Out of the front arc, still going to be taking a side wow. arc shot, though. So he was he was expecting the 5K. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to... Wow, Obi-Wan actually might be taking a, a range 1 here in the front arc. Because he was expecting a 5K, so that, which is why he one turned in and was hoping for a bump. Here we go, big shot. Only one crit. Safe. Next one. This is the one that really matters. Could get Obi Wan off the board. Obi has one force available. Only one for Asajj. Killer. Absolutely killer. Oh, has the front arc. Is one die short. Does have the force available? Two. Obi Wan takes one. That addition. Oh no! Wait, 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 wait! There was an evade in there. Spence, and it's fine. Yeah, he's safe. He is safe. So my question is: Can Asajj stay on the board next turn? Um. Because it's too hard to the left is going off the board. Too hard to the right. I guess too hard to the right bumps. And that's fine. Yeah. But I mean, then are you are But you, then are you facing the board edge yeah. again? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. 
Yeah, I think Nick that uh, Nick really was going hard on that 5K because that one turn while you're stressed is uh, pretty risky, and he got he got lucky to get out of there. You know, I think this this game with Andrew, he probably could have afforded to be a little more aggressive with Asajj in terms of taking target locks um, instead of taking evades. I, I, th I think you know he. As soon as he's half pointed, right, mm -hmm. you're not really trying to conserve health anymore. You just want to try to put some damage through. And I think, for example, that turn to target lock, you know, that's that's a dead OB one. We might have one to two more turns left. We will be live tomorrow at the same time, starting uh, rolling those dice at 10 a.m. Pacific time with our top 32 match, taking you all the way to the final. Everybody in the top 32 does get that Coruscant invite. And there's the hard two bump. Yeah, Asajj should be able to stay on the board next turn with the hard two. Yeah, she's fine. Three right turn for Anakin. And Nick Tobin keeping those ships in the fight, choosing violence. Staying aggressive. I believe one more damage into Han gets you half, and I think that would seal up the game for Nick Tobin. Just double check. That's six. Yep. One more. Three straight. Clears a stress with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Harvey just slaps down a focus. No. I see. That was a force expenditure. Where are you going? Boosting. And then a focus? Imagineering man in the chat asking, is there a day two? There is. Ooh. All right. We're going to have a little face off there. Han spending his action to rotate to the front. No modifiers there, though. This is just straight dice. Yeah, and I, Han and shot I think, first. I think it's out of the range, too, for this dress. Two hits. Obi-Wan has a focus. Has to spend the focus in order to live. No shot for Plo. Range one for Obi-Wan. If he nicks a one here, he gets a half and locks it up. Oh, that'll, that'll do, do it. it. I think this game was also a, a good demonstration of how Nick had to use all of his force early to, to put through damage, and he was really forced start for the rest of the game, and I think that's a big key when Flying Jedi is just as much as you can conserve force, it's so important late in the game. Agreed. So could take out Obi One here. No mods from Obi. One hit, and this is going to be our last round. that 
Okay. So congratulations, Nick Tobin, for winning that game, 134-71. to Guaranteed into the top 32, has earned the Coruscant invitation. And Andrew is going down to 4-2, and two, but depending on his MOV, he might have an opportunity to still make it into that top 32. We'll see when the rankings hit us.